Hey YouTubers, it's Teela here, Children of the Serpent, and this is our second video, but our first official lesson, so I'm pretty excited about going into that. But before we get started, I just want to send a reminder, if you're interested in teaching for the Children of the Serpent, please submit your video to childrenoftheserpent at gmail.com. Also, I will be providing that information down in the description, along with my direct um, Facebook my Facebook page and if I remember my Instagram as well and so that way you can contact me if you need to and if you're interested in joining into our actual Facebook group I can add you there as well and you can also find us on other um, social networks and you can find us I believe I created a Twitter but I'm never on there so if you want to go on there you can but I'm, I never get on and then I do have a tumblr blog and I will remember to try to post that link as well in the description otherwise let's go ahead and begin the lesson so we're gonna go ahead and go over the history of Satan so we've the Satan has changed throughout the periods of time, what his name means, how he's seen, like his image. He went from a beautiful angel to a horned goat god to modern days as he hides behind human faces, as we can see in the TV series Lucifer. So the way we even visually see him has changed. And even the meanings behind him has changed, which most people do not realize. And modern Christianity, a lot of people see Satan as the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Um, he is usually connected as a seducer or to tempt humans into evil. He is considered a most, by most modern religions as the enemy of God. Um, but that hasn't actually always been the case. So the name Satan uh, it refers to, in Hebrew language, the adversary or the accuser. Um, but it was never capitalized with an S. We'll get into that a little bit further here in a second, but the first thing I want to go into is his actual, just his name. And his name can actually be traced back to the Sanskrit language. So the Hebrew language was influenced by other languages such as Latin and Sanskrit. There's even been articles written re into regards of this. One of the more popular articles was actually in 1979 by the Oriental Institute of Barada published a paper entitled, The Hebrews Belong to a Branch of Verdict Aryans. And that is because they have so much similar words to the Sanskrit language, it's almost ridiculous. Like they are so close together. And the one I'm going to refer to is the name Sat Na. So Sat Nam means true identity or true self. And, and that's kind of a different meaning than what we get in the Hebrew language. We also have different variations such as Satanama, Satan with the Y. So we can see how that connection is. And I'm sorry, I got a runny nose. I'm a bit sick, um, but I still wanted to get this video done. So just kind of ignore that. <laughs> Uh, and just to kind of move on back to where we're getting at where Satan is not this evil type God, at least not in the Old Testament. We're going to get into how it was just referred to as a title. So we can see in the book of Job, in the book of Isaiah, uh, we also have um, Kings chapter 5 verses 4, Kings chapter 11 verses 14 and verse 23, where Satan is given just as a name to those who actually work under God and are trying to test humans or do other types of things but in God's will. And Satan can actually be connected to as another version of God himself, which might piss some people off. It could piss off both the Satanists and the Christians. However, there is a connection there. Now, it may not be what it actually is, I have no idea. That is not my place to tell you. I'm just here to give you information. And the a good resource, of course, you can always look at the Bible. If you don't believe anything I said, that's why I gave you the information where to find it. But another good source is the history and origins of Satan, a study by Lucas Sweeney. You can Google this and you'll find a PDF file and you can read it yourself and do your own research, which I do always suggest that. Um, and now we're going to get into how Satan got taken away from just the title into this evil enemy, scary God kind of ordeal. So what it is, is there was this man named Zohar. He is one of the foundations of Jewish esotericism. Um, what he was is he helped, he was a big role player into the Kabbalah, and he created this concept of good 
versus evil. So good and versus evil has not always existed. We've always had our creator, kind of more of a better version God or whatever people tend to worship more and more like gods. And we've always had kind of our adversary type of God, our protagonist, and um, our more tricky gods like we can see this with Loki, Hades. However, these gods were not considered evil. In fact, they were even worshipped and even highly respected, they were given offerings, so it's a lot different than what we've came to accept in today's society of good versus evil. And he insisted that there is this constant battle between good and evil, that the good must overcome the evil. And this took into where they took Satan's name, because it really stuck, of course, with the Jewish belief systems. And it eventually evolved Satan by the time he hit to Christianity. He was a scary evil God who is out to get you and is out to make you the worst version of yourself pretty much to make you sin and do wrong um, so he was no longer a title and by the time it got to Christianity this is where we get into our really bad dark history with the Holy Inquisition the Salem witch trials the satanic panic and into today's modern terrorism and it's all been done in the name of religion as we've had countless murders, rapes, slavery. We have justified by calling the enemy, by dehumanizing them. They are no longer just people, but they are Satan. So they will even say that into our modern war where they will accuse that they are fighting Satan to justify their wrongdoing instead of taking self-responsibility. So what Satan really has come to be as an escape goat for people to justify their wrongs is really what happened here, which is really sad because we've had about a recorded amount of 16 to 31 million people that have died in the name of religion. So, yeah, and it's, it's ridiculous. Also, the whole good and evil concept, good and evil is completely subjective. So what I might see as good, you might see as bad. What you see as bad, I might see as good. It's it goes either way. It doesn't matter. That is completely matter of what your reality is, what you accept of your personal morals is. So I, it's ridiculous that we are over here fighting who's right and who's wrong. But okay. Next thing, to kind of break away from Satan being more than just a title. So like I said, we have antagonists, we have adversaries throughout different mythologies. We can, well, pretty much all mythologies actually have this type of god. And so Satan can be connected to all these different gods. Same with your Christian god or any other type of god can be have various names. And um, this is called comparative mythology. This is what scholars use to find the similarities between each mythology. And if you get into this study, you will be blown away by how strong the connections are, or how similar they are. Um, also, we get into back into Jewish mythology is in the Talmud. I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm sorry if I am. Um, is we get into Samuel. So Samuel is usually seen as the accuser, the adversary, enemy of God. His name actually means venom of God or poison of God. But he can also be seen as a force of good and evil. So, and he's usually also famously known as Satan. And if you watch the TV series show Lucifer, you'll see how they'll even say in one of the episodes where they have this God character come into play and says, and he uses his real name, Samuel. And they connect that, which I, which I love that the show Lucifer did some research to make that connection. And that's how Samuel, though, was a real entity, real deity, who existed throughout the Jewish lore. And then another connection, of course, is the most famous one, is Lucifer and Satan. Um, this connection can very well much be real, and I do not argue the whole names or who's right or who's wrong, because I believe we do not know the true names of the gods, and I do not need to know them. They can all be connected. They can all be all different. I, it doesn't matter to me. Um, however, when it comes to the Bible itself, there's actually no connection between Lucifer and Satan. There's actually a connection between Lucifer and Jesus, though, uh, which I can pull that up. I have that here. Let me look it up. So, yes, it is Revelation chapter 5, verses 5, where Jesus is referred well, actually, 
Yeah, where Jesus is referred to as the lion in the tribe of Judah. And then we also have Revelation chapter 22, verses 16, where Jesus unmistakably identifies himself as the morning star. Um, and then there's quite a few more verses that just kind of make that connection between Lucifer and Jesus. That doesn't mean they are the same. I'm just saying that there's technically more evidence supporting that than Lucifer and Satan being the same. And what actually the reason why Lucifer and Satan got connected as the same is about 500, 550 AD is, I believe it was his name is Pope Leo, and he was kind of upset because Lucifer comes from the Latin word light barrier to start to make to be clear and he was actually a pagan god associated with the morning star the planet venus blah 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 and he's like um we can't have people worshiping him so let's go ahead and connect him to satan who already has a negative connotation about him and let's put them together as one so now it's one evil force and it kind of breaks away from the worship of lucifer to be now a feared god which they do that the religions have been famously known to destroy ancient gods and demonize them that's a very common thing they like to do which is unfortunate because everybody's fell for it um and that's pretty much it uh, I personally see Satan as my spiritual father. So what that means is I don't, I personally do worship. Not all Satanists do. Some because they see themselves as gods. And I do see myself as a god too. And I see Satan as part of me, as part of everyone. Um, in the sense of all Satanists at least, I guess. Uh, but he, I work on my meditation, spiritually evolve, kundalini awakenings, or reach enlightenment. But I do this through the practice and the guidance of Satan himself. Um, and every Satanist is different how they see him. Some see him as an atheistic view, which he is just a symbol, a force of nature. Um, but the theistic Satanists usually see him as some type of father or some type of god of rebel something that means something relevant to us we all create our own god and to fit our own views and understandings um the gods and demons goddesses whatever you want to call them we cannot understand them fully they are not ident we do not have them like we can see you and me together in a human body it, it's very unexplained so there's so much to it that we cannot understand in the human life which is fine but we can learn as much as we can and, and embrace um, these all these types of paths and I try to learn from everyone and that's what I suggest if you're new to this path try to keep an open mind and you will eventually create your own path and really really expand your knowledge anyways that is it for tonight and you have a great day y'all and hell Satan